So, I'm not going to see Smurfs 2 this week. Because there's no fucking way. No way. Like, seriously. If fucking Smurfs 2 was playing in a theater and outside was the fucking apocalypse, like flaming rain that was AIDS and acid was fucking falling from the sky and like horrible elephant rape demons were running around with like eight fucking tentacle dicks like fucking just doing all kinds of shit. I would still run out into the fire. I would run out. I would run out. I would run out. I would I would openly embrace fucking oblivion or eternity of fucking horror. Whatever. I'm not seeing fucking Smurfs too. I am not seeing Smurfs fucking too. I'm not seeing a Smurfs movie as like, that's the one fucking rule I am setting down for these movie reviews. I will not go see a fucking CGI live action version of a cartoon fucking from the 80s or 60s or 70s. Any of that shit. Name one good version of that. You fucking can't. It's never fucking worked. Don't want, and don't get fucking, don't don't you fucking say Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Don't you fucking say it. Because fucking that's different. That's fucking traditional animation. That's a completely different thing. And Two Guns, like, honestly. To be fair, if I did a review of Two Guns, probably more people would fucking watch my review than that. Because, like, that movie looks... I don't know, though. I'm doing this late Saturday, so... I don't know how it's doing by time I post this. Maybe, like, it's the biggest movie ever. But I doubt... It just... It looks so fucking like... It looks like... Hey, fucking action movie. The movie. It's just like... I have a gaping hole this week. And I've been sitting on something. And it's been a while now, so I've had to fucking rewatch it. And this is a movie. I've talked about it before on here. I got really fucking angry about it and really angry about the person who's in it. And I, and, and you know what? It, I just, I fucking, I watched it once. I got really fucking, I, I almost blanked out. I got really hot. I got sweaty. I thought I was fucking having a heart attack. It's really, I, that's why I don't have a fucking undershirt this time. Because I'm like, I'm so fucking enraged. Like my, I'm like the red fucking Hulk right now. I just, I, I, ah, grown ups too. Remember, we used to come here after we got wasted. <laughs> I'm so glad we left the city. This is such a good place to raise a family. God, like this was fucking horrible. This was really, really fucking bad. I know nobody sets out to make bad movies. I know that. Cause who would? Well, Yui Bold does, but he's different. There's like reasons. In a way, he's a smart man because he saw a fucking loophole. He fucking was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna fucking capitalize on it. And video game movies are hot. Really, that's the only thing you should really be mad at Yui Bold for is. Not that he made shitty movies. People like Ed Wood, he made shitty fucking movies. Like, a, a you and Bold movie isn't as bad as a fucking Ed Wood movie. Oh man, a lot of people are probably gonna be like, fucking Ed Wood is fucking goddamn fucking John Cobber to compare to fucking Yui Bold. How fucking dare you? I'm not joking. I am really fucking agitated right fucking now. I am so fucking agitated. So I know these people didn't set out to make this movie the worst fucking comedy movie I've ever seen. And I'm I'm finally glad something's come along. So I'm going to tell you a little story real quickly. Maybe you'll... You know what? Let me line up a cigarette. Calm down a bit. Dogs are fucking getting freaked out now. It's a fucking sign. Sign of bad fucking things to come. first movie I ever went to, I remember, was Batman 89. I was four. And for the longest time, 
I've seen hundreds of movies. Hundreds. I fucking never walked out on a movie. No matter how bad it was, I never walked out. It's a point of pride. I didn't walk out of the Ang Lee Hulk movie. I didn't walk out of X-Men Last Stand. I didn't fucking walk out of a lot of fucking dreadful, horrible movies. Except for one, Envy. I know a lot of you right now is like, what the fuck's Envy? And that's what makes me even more enraged. It's a movie that fucking flopped. And rightfully fucking so. It was fucking horrible. And the few of us who got lured into it, because it's like, oh, it's fucking Ben Stiller. It's, it, you know, that was right off the heels of fucking Zoolander. And, oh, it's Jack Black. And, you know, Tenacious D was fucking really big at the time. So it's like, this has to be good. Right? Right? No. It's awful. To this day, I don't know how that movie ended. It's basically a movie about Jack Black's character makes a fucking spray poo be gone, it disappears poop, and Ben Stiller's character gets all envious, ah, there's the title, that's the movie that broke me, and it's honestly a movie that should not have broken me, that's why I, I still hold a, like a stupid fucking grudge against Jack Black and fucking Ben Stiller, I will never fucking forgive him. I will never forgive them for breaking me cinematically, I didn't even walk out of the two fucking prequel Star Wars movies. And the fucking second time I saw Phantom Menace. Yes, I saw it two times. And you know what? <clears throat> any fucking buddy who... Any nerd out there who wants to fucking try to make fun of me. You saw it twice too. We all saw it twice. We all did. We couldn't believe how bad it was the first time. So we were like, hey, maybe... Maybe I just saw it on a bad night. You know, maybe I shouldn't have stood in line for as long as I did. Maybe I should have. You know, let me let me go in the afternoon when I'm well rested. Maybe I've had a nice lunch. I went on a date. It was the worst date ever because, like, at the last moment she brought her dad. And, fuck it, he was standing in between us the whole time. So it's like, pfft. Great, and that then I only had the fucking movie to focus on. And then I was, like, immediately, like... Holy shit, this is as bad as I fucking thought when I first fucking saw it. It is not fucking good. So, Grown Ups 2, I don't want to talk about it. I really don't. I actually watched the first one, to be fair. It's like, I got a fucking coat. I got a nice comfy chair. I got editing and effects and shit. There's a thing over on this side of the screen or on this side of the screen. I don't know. So I'm like official now, so I gotta be fucking fair about shit. So I watched the first one, that was bad, but like, it's forgettable. It's basically a movie in the same vein as like Wild Hogs. Remember that Tim Allen movie that came out a few years? You know, yeah, that movie was bad, but it was just, you know, it's bad. This movie, on the other hand, it's like, here's the thing. Every decade, Adam Sandler has just slipped. He's gone from the height of the 90s, and let's be completely honest here, folks, it's fucking, it's real time. Real time fucking with Napalm, the fucking reviewer. Fucking, he was never funny. Let's be completely honest. His big shtick was, What's the opera man? He was fucking idiot man child. And there were way better fucking idiot man child in the fucking 90s. Chris Elliott, for example. Cabin Boy is one of the best underrated fucking movies of the 90s. God, I love Cabin Boy. I should see if that's on Netflix. I'm not joking. After watching Grown Ups 2, I had to fucking like free base black adder all four seasons i had to be reminded that fucking humor existed in the universe that's going back on the second point too comedies are the hardest movies to make in my opinion because action horror science fiction drama maybe documentaries as well action 
for example. Action, there's a lot of action movies out there that don't really work as well as action movies, but they have other elements to them that make them more demon. Maybe they have an interesting story. Maybe they have a really good cast and it's really well acted, you know, etc., etc. Uh, drama, too. Like, l look at The Room, for example. You know, The Room is one of the worst drama movies ever fucking... It's one of the worst movies ever fucking made. But it transcends... It fails at its initial premise, but it, it transcends because of how bad it is. Comedy, on the other hand, when comedy fails, there's nothing there. I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days. I've been trying to think of a comedy movie that's so bad it's good, and I can't fucking think of a one. There, there's probably a couple. There's always, like, exceptions to rules and stuff, but no, every bad fucking comedy movie I can think of is just bad bad. It's not good bad on any fucking level. Maybe like some 70s comedies, you know, like, like, uh, you know, like Blackula. Cause that's kind of funny. And just like, oh, look at how fucking corny. But again, that was like, that was like kind of like, oh, look at how fucking bad this comedy is. That's like a whole different kind of brand of fucking comedy. That's like anti-humor. So yeah, I know they had like challenges going into this, but I'm just going to tell you one thing. I could end the review after saying this. In all honesty, Rob Schneider, Rob Schneider, the star of such great fucking dreck as The Animal and the Deuce Bigelow movies, Rob Schneider refused to be in this movie. Let that sink in. Okay. Rob Schneider was too fucking good for this movie. So, anyways, back to Adams. And I'm sorry this review is so scatterbrained. So, the 90s was the height. And, it, yeah, there were really good movies. I like, I love fucking Happy Gilmore. Billy Madison was good. Wedding Singer was fucking great. But then the 2000s came along, and he started doing, like, mediocre crap. And it, not necessarily bad crap. The little Mickey was meh. It had its, it had its good moments. 51st Dates, you know, cheap fucking rip off of fucking Wedding Singer, but whatever. Click, bleh, Punch Drunk Love, uh, Longest Yard, uh, that was a fucking, remember when he did the remake of The Longest Yard, that was fucking boring. And it had all the fucking wrestlers in it, who, surprisingly, the wrestlers were better fucking actors than Adam Sandler, go figure. It makes sense though, there's a lot of acting involved in professional wrestling. Then the 2010s hit, and he started making movies like Jack and Jill, and That's My Boy, which, That's My Boy. I wish I did these reviews back then, because That's My Boy, that's one of those movies, that's a movie, I've never bef been offended at a movie or any form of artwork before, because, you know, it's, it's art. The only things that really truly offend me are the stupid and misplaced hate. That's, those are the only two things that really truly offend me. That's my boy. Almost offended me. Almost. It didn't offend me, but it almost offended me. It was like... Mm, mm, mm. It's really... That movie is just... And he... And like... There's a certain like hatefulness to his movies now and it's just it's not i don't get it like i don't get it at all getting into this movie why it fucking fails first and foremost adam sandler is the smart one out of all his fucking friends yeah i believe that one the guy who built his entire career on being the idiot man child he's the most intelligent one out of all his group of friends mmm it's like, look, Adam, it's too fucking late in your fucking career to try to become the intelligent... Like, Chris Rock is in this fuck... You fucking really, truly expect me to believe that Adam Sandler is smarter than Chris Rock? In no fucking universe is Adam Sandler smarter than Chris Rock. None. There's none. Not even the one universe where fucking Chris Rock is Terry Schiavo. 
Even in that fucking, in Chris Rock, Terry, Terry Shivo universe, he's so fucking more intelligent and fucking sharp-witted than fucking Adam Sandler is any fucking day of the week. So Adam Sandler's the smartest one, and he's a fucking unredeemable fucking asshole. He constantly fucking attacks his wife. Not, like, physically. He attacks his children physically. He breaks, like, one of their legs. That's a fucked up scene. You know, he verbally demeans his wife. He ogles other women in front of his wife. And the other fucking guys in this movie do, too. It's, it's you know, I don't like to throw out that, the misogyny word. Because that word's, like, overused and stuff. But, like, yeah, I could... Just... If somebody came out and was like, this movie's misogynistic, I would, I would not disagree with them. So yeah, he's a bad, he's a bad husband, bad father. Like I said, he breaks his kid's legs. He fucking rips his daughter's favorite stuffed animal in front of her. The teacher constantly fucking lies to his children every fucking time he gets. It's, it's just, it's fucking like, how am I supposed to like this guy? He doesn't get why people liked his earlier, like... Take Happy Gilmore, for example. His fucking production company isn't named after the fucking movie, for Christ's sakes. Happy Gilmore, yeah, he had, he was a fucking prick bag. He had anger problems. He was a really mean, almost unlikable guy. But almost unlikable. Because although he had the anger problems, there was an other side to Happy Gilmore. A sweeter, kinder, gentler side. This character in this movie totally fucking lacks that. So, it's just like, I don't fucking care if he learns the lesson. He's a fucking dickbag. Also, there's a lot of fucking, like, like just piss and shit and fart jokes. Like, there's there's a CGI deer dick in one part. That's how the movie fucking begins. CGI deer dick fucking spraying Adam Sandler with CGI deer piss. While he's in bed, and then this deer fucking runs into the bathroom where the fucking son's trying to jerk off, thinking about the girl he likes, and then the deer pisses on him. Also, that joke, that joke I just said, the fucking, the son, that's, that's set up later in the movie. <laughs> way to go, fucking, way to go, movie. You failed in the most fundamental fucking premise of comedy. The punchline comes after the setup, not before the setup. You fucking hack. And I know I probably spent more of this movie bitching about other fucking things, but fuck you. You probably aren't going to see this movie. It's already been out in theaters. It's made probably 99% of the money it's ever going to make. Here I'm coming with my last little feeble fucking pebble to throw at it. You're going to fucking criticize? Fuck you. Anybody who says anything about this. <sighs> Same fucking conclusion, like, fuck Adam Sandler, like, seriously, he is fucking, he is 